Hello, my name is Jeffrey Gillen. I'm a researcher at the University of Arizona, and I spend most of my time working on the Cybers project. So today I want to talk to you about how you can make your drone imagery open and cloud native. So this uh, talk, this presentation was originally given at the International Association of Landscape Ecology, um, March 20th, 2023 in Riverside, California. So people that are helping me with this, uh, this topic is Tyson Swetnam, who also works for Cybers, but then we have collaborators, Derek Young from UC Davis and Michael Koontz from CU Boulder. So what is Cybers? So Cybers is cyber infrastructure for big data science. We are cloud storage and we're cloud compute uh, for a variety of scientific disciplines. For instance, we work in plant science, we work in genetics, genomics, uh, astronomy, and ever more increasingly, we're working in remote sensing of the environment with, um, with imagery. So my role at Cybers is to develop imagery processing and analysis pipelines for high computation cloud computing. And so this is specifically around aerial photography and drone imagery. So nowadays, I don't really do much of my own science. It's more like I partner with other researchers around the country and they handle their science questions. And we handle most of the cyber infrastructure like processing and storage and compute. So I wanna spend most of my time with you guys talking about sharing your drone imagery. So it's a topic I've become really interested in in the, in the last few months. I want you to imagine a world where all of all of our drone imagery um, is fair. It's all findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Nowadays, you know, a lot of people that are collecting drone imagery, a lot of that drone imagery is just sitting on some hard drive somewhere or maybe a server. And very often that data is not accessible to anyone but the person who originally collected it. So what if all of that drone imagery, I mean, petabytes and petabytes globally, what if it were all just um, findable and tradable online? So that's kind of the, the thought behind this presentation. So with that in mind, let's talk about why we want to share our drone imagery in the first place. There's a few great reasons. Uh, one, it can enable broad analysis that we can never really do by ourselves or in a small group. So we can really open it up to many people collaborating. And we can do very broad analysis. We can help others working in your same study area. If we all shared our journal imagery, we could aggregate imagery data sets for killer machine learning training data sets. That could be a very interesting thing we could do. Um, wouldn't it be great if you could find drone imagery to help validate some of the, the satellite products or the satellite analysis you're doing? And then finally, uh, sharing or making your data open access is, is quickly becoming federal policy. So if you are taking taxpayer money in the form of grants, you're gonna have to make your data, your methods, your, um, your intellectual property available in the open. Okay, so that was the why. And let's talk about where now. So where, where do I share my drone imagery? Where on the web do, do we do this exchange? How do we connect online to share drone imagery? Um, one place I wanna talk about first is a website called Geonator. So Geonator is an Australian company. They are an Australian group. And they have this really slick website called Geonator where you can um, have your own user profile. You can upload raw drone imagery. You can scroll around on a world map, find other imagery. You can download that raw imagery. So it's just a really kind of slick, um, polished. It's a very uh, easy to navigate website. I've got you know, 100,000 plus images of my of my drone imagery up on this website. So it's a really good option. Um, the only limitation is that it really only works with raw imagery for now. So currently you cannot upload and share ortho mosaics or uh, point clouds or any other imagery product. 
But for raw imagery, Geonator is a really good option. Okay, where else could we share? Uh, another option could be Google, Google Earth Engine. So I imagine most of you have probably played with this tool before. Uh, a few years back, I had a really large um, field data, like drone imagery collection campaign at the Santa Rita Experimental Range in um, outside of Tucson, Arizona. And so this is a, a range monitoring project. And so I ended up collecting 85,000 total images, um, had 106 flight areas. So it was a very large collection campaign. And I was looking for a, a really robust platform to do broad analysis on all of these images at the same time, and then also share them out in an interesting way. And Google Earth Engine ended up being like a great, a great tool to do that. And so I ended up stuffing into Google Earth Engine um, dozens and dozens of orthomosaics, canopy height models. I wrote a little bit of uh, code and did a classification. And then I built this Earth Engine app. And so you can go to this, this website right here. And on that website, you can explore the data products. You can um, see the classifications I made and get some data summaries. So it's a really slick tool uh, for collaboration with your colleagues to make a great sharing website, um, do big data analysis. You know, the only real limitation is that it um, there are storage limitations. So currently you can only have 250 gigabytes of imagery assets in your account. And that wasn't even enough to do this one project. We actually had to have multiple logins to do the project. Um, so there's a limitation there. So, I mean, Earth Engine is a great tool, but it's probably not the, the grand solution for putting the world's drone imagery online. Where else? Um, so the first two examples I mentioned to you are what I call kind of a central database, right? So now let's talk about what I call a distributed model. So we can just take our drone imagery and instead of putting it, putting it in a specific website, we can just have it somewhere up on the web, somewhere in cloud storage, okay? And that somewhere could be cybers, as we are cloud storage, but it doesn't just have to be there. It could be, it could be on your own personal server or, or it could be in commercial cloud somewhere. So with this distributed model, just put your drone imagery products up on cloud storage somewhere. Okay, so that's the first step. But then the question is, okay, then how do we um, connect with each other? How do we find each other's drone imagery, right? How do we do that? The way we can do that is using something called STACK, which is stands for Spatial Temporal Asset Catalog. So STACK is a... It's a JSON format metadata standard. And what it is, it's an attempt by a lot of people in the geospatial community to kind of rally around a standard way to describe and, and find um, geospatial data across the web. Um, companies like Planet Lab, um, Microsoft Planetary Computer, they are all indexing their imagery products, their data products using Stack. And so this is what stack looks like. It's just kind of um, a boring JSON text file, but you can use it to describe everything you would want to know about a drone imagery product. What kind of drone platform is used? What's the license for that imagery? Um, you can list descriptions. You can um, list the projection, um, the ground sampling distance, pretty much anything you want to use to describe drone imagery products. You can probably do this in the stack catalog. So that's one aspect, okay? Just the JSON stack catalogs. Then we can use something called a stack browser to, to read that JSON metadata and then render it into this kind of nice graphical user interface where you can um, uh, you know, discover data products. You can go through different folders. You can find imagery assets that might be of interest to you. You can get a preview of them. Or, or you can download the images or stream the images. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. So the stack browser is, it's just a way to interact, um, interact with the data in a kind of a graphical way. 
So if you guys are familiar with Earth Explorer, Earth Explorer is how the USGS distributes a lot of their imagery products. So it, it's kind of an attempt to do something similar to Earth Explorer. Maybe not quite as, uh, as great, uh, but the same idea. So the stack catalog and the stack browser, that's what, we've, that's what we've talked about so far. So let's talk about the distributed model. In this model, everyone's drone imagery is just located um, in cloud storage in different places around the world, right? Cybers, commercial cloud, your own personal server, wherever. And the way that we can connect is everyone's drone imagery has got to, got to be described using the same stack metadata protocol. So we all use the same catalog, so to speak, the same metadata description for our, for our drone imagery products. And then we have to have a central location where someone can go and find all these different stack catalogs. And there actually is a place already. It's called stackindex.org. And it's a list of just all the different stack catalogs you can go to. And so if we all do um, all this stack thing all the same way, we are essentially building one giant catalog. The, the actual imagery assets, like the point clouds and the ortho mosaics, digital elevation models, they just remain. They stay on these remote servers. Like We don't put them all in a central place. They can just be where they are but it's the metadata that we bring to a central location. And that's where someone goes to go find what geographic data is out there, to, to find what stack catalogs to browse. It becomes kind of the central hub to find what you're looking for. And so that is stack, spatial temporal asset catalog. All right, now that we've described stack, let's talk about cloud native geospatial formats. So you have your data up in cloud storage, right? Now we're going to talk about what format should that drone data be. So cloud-native geospatial, these are formats that are born on and for the internet. And so we have raster and we have point cloud formats that are built specifically for HTTP, in other words, streaming. So it's the difference between like downloading a movie and streaming a movie on Netflix. So, you know, that's kind of the analogy we have. So we can stream um, geographic data or drone imagery across the internet without someone having to download it first. So yeah, so users can view and they can analyze without having to download full files. We do the streaming model. A great thing about it is that it eliminates the need for me as the individual drone collector to have specialized GIS server. You know, Earth Explorer from the USGS is great, but I don't really have the ability to probably make something like that. So instead, we can leverage the existing infrastructure of cloud storage, and we can put our data products as um, cloud native formats, and then they can just be served out in a streaming manner to anyone around the world who wants to check them out. So let's meet some of these um, cloud native formats. The first one to be aware of is the cloud optimized GeoTIFF or a COG. So the COG, it's the same GeoTIFF that you know and you love, and most of our drone imagery products are GeoTIFFs, most likely. But it's a little different. It's the GeoTIFF plus tiles and overviews are baked directly into the file. Okay, when you have that information baked in, then it enables you to do HTTP get range requests. In other words, streaming. A really cool thing you can do is you can stream a COG directly into QGIS, and you can do you can view it, you can do analysis with it, and you can do that analysis in memory. And if you want to save it to your local disk, you can do that. But it just makes it so much more frictionless to be able to stream it directly into your in, into a tool or into your browser, into QGIS, interact with it. And you don't have to download all the data first to start checking it out. There's a few different COG uh, viewers on the web. Uh, one to be aware of is T-Tyler. And uh, at Cybers, we have our own instance of the T-Tyler uh, COG viewer. You can check it out. Cogeo also has a, um, a COG viewer. Check that out as well.
Okay, the next format to be aware of is the cloud optimized point cloud. So it's very similar to you know, the same idea as the GeoTIFF, only we're talking point cloud formats. So the cloud optimized point cloud is it's just an LAZ format. You know, it's a very common format for point clouds. Plus, it has the auxiliary information included directly in, in the file format. And once we have that information, again, we can do HTTP get range requests. In other words, we can stream point clouds directly from cloud storage into your web browser for really easy viewing um, and analysis. So I'd love to thank uh, Howard Butler and his group. They, uh, they developed the Cloud Optimized Point Cloud and then developed this really nice viewer, viewer.copc.io. So you can stream a, um, a Cloud Optimized Point Cloud directly from anywhere in cloud storage into this viewer. And you can um, get a great rendered point cloud and then you can share that point cloud with anyone on the web. Okay, so the final stuff I want to talk to you about is a case study. So I am involved in a newly funded NSF project called Open Forest Observatory. And Open Forest Observatory is a collaboration between UC Davis, CU Boulder, and Cybers and the University of Arizona. And so in this project, we are trying to, um, trying to kind of do everything that I talked about today in terms of cloud native technology. So OFO, or Open Forest Observatory, is a hub for forest drone um, imagery products. So we are collecting monitoring data across uh, you know, forest plots across the American West. And they are all, they're all drone-based. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a hub in terms of there's going to be tons of data products available for anyone to access um, all of our Processing and analysis uh, scripts and code will be available for people to download. And then all of our data products will be uh, viewable with a stack catalog and also a stack API. So let me show you the basic pipeline of how this goes. So this summer and then several subsequent summers afterward, we are going to collect a whole lot of drone imagery using real-time kinematic drones. We're going to do that over uh, forest plots that you know are part of existing uh, monitoring programs. And we're going to end up with a whole lot of imagery, terabytes and terabytes of drone imagery. We're going to take all that drone imagery, put it in the Cybers data store, okay? And then we can port all of that raw imagery over to our cloud computer. In this case, we are primarily using Jetstream 2, uh, which is, is specific for NSF-funded uh, science. And so we can move all the, draw, the raw imagery over to Jetstream 2. And within Jetstream 2, um, we can do all of our photogrammetry processing in a parallel distributed way. We can do all our machine learning and classification algorithms. And once we've done all of our kind of our processing analysis, we're going to take our imagery products and put them back in the, in the Cybers data store and then make them available. So here's what that looks like. So here we are in our, our Cybers cloud storage or the Cybers data store. And so we're going to make point clouds in a cloud optimized point cloud way, put them up in cloud storage. We'll make digital elevation models, ortho mosaics and other data products, other analysis products like classification. And all of those two-dimensional products will be COGS or cloud-optimized geotiffs. So then we can make all that information or that data available to any user across the world. Um, with an internet connection, they can just go to stack.cybers.org and in our stack catalog, it'll help them browse and find data products that, that they are interested in. And from there, they can download the products or they can stream them directly into QGIS or their browser for much easier analysis or simple, um, simple um, viewing. And so uh, that is the end of my talk, uh, pretty short and sweet. So the take home message is you can make your drone imagery open and cloud native. 
and we can help you do that. So if you have any questions, uh, please hit me up. I'm at jgillen at cybers.org. You can also get me at jgillen at arizona.edu. Um, if you want to learn more about um, cloud native geospatial technologies, please check out these three links here. Um, really great information. So thank you very much for your time and um, um, have a wonderful day. Can't think of a better way to end this.